Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome to Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and we really mean that. Friends, we are so glad that you're here to worship with us on um, not a particularly important day in the liturgical calendar, but it is an important day um, in our calendar as a, as a community because it is Quad Day. And this past week, 56,000 of our favorite neighbors have moved back to town, and we happen to sit smack dab in the middle of their neighborhood. Um, and you all choose to drive to this place uh, if, you don't, if you're not a student and you don't live here on campus. You choose to drive to this place and make this place your community of faith. And that says something about who you are and who we are. And that's what we're going to explore today. Um, to that end, Pastor Nate has a really important announcement about Quad Day. And before I say anything else about worship, we're going to let him um, let you know what's going on today. Hi, everyone. So I'm Pastor Nate. I do the campus ministry here, and it's wonderful to see some returning and new students, and I'm very excited. And today is Quad Day. So um, they've put us further away than normal, which gives us all the religious groups further away than normal, which gives us a little bit of logistical challenges this year. Um, but we're going to make that work. So the one thing, though, that I could use some help with I'm going to have to leave worship early in order to go to the booth and start getting it set up before the deadline, because if you're not there by the deadline, they take your table down. They're not messing around this year. So, <laughs> so if there's one person with a car that doesn't have commitments at the, at the end of worship that could give me a lift down, that would make it a little bit easier, and I'd appreciate that. Uh, and I'm going to have to leave early, so I'm going to entrust that... Uh, the, all the rest of the announcements and other stuff to the students and other ministers that we have here. And I see some hands waving for the car. All right, you're my ride. Thank you. All right, so about at about 11 o'clock, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> Thanks, Pastor Nate. They didn't even let them know where their table was until like six hours ago or something. So it's all very top secret. Um, what, one more announcement, like a housekeeping thing before worship begins. If you're the kind of person who likes to keep your hands busy while you're listening, boy, do we have something for you. It's time, yes, lovey, good job. It is time for us to cut out Rainbow Hearts again for Pride Fest, which this year is the first weekend in October. So there's a basket on the table um, just behind this section of pews. There are um, uh, scissors in there and feel free to to grab some and cut them out and return the hearts to the basket. Um, if you don't know, um, we have these hearts that say you are loved for who you are, and we cut them out by hand, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, and hand them out at Pride Fest every year. So thanks for helping with that. This morning we have a special liturgist. You don't see someone sitting here, and that's because this morning our liturgist um, is CUCC -er, Izzy Colazzo, um, who is starting seminary classes very soon at Chicago Theological Seminary. So Izzy is our liturgist from uh, her apartment in Chicago. Good morning, Izzy. Morning. Oh, good morning. Did you like that moment of movie magic right there? We are so glad that you are um, our liturgist today. Thanks so much. And I want to thank especially the tech team for making that um, possible. So friends, we welcome you to worship this morning. And when I say we, who do I mean? I mean we. We are young and old and middle-aged. We are gay and straight and in between and beyond. We are... Um, confused and inspired, happy and sad. We are street smart and college educated. Some of us can't pay our bills and some of us have more than enough to share. Who are we? We are the body of Christ and together we are the church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, friends, you are welcome here and we really truly mean that. Welcome to worship. 
So this morning for our call to worship, um, it is responsive, but then there's a little more that's not actually listed in your bulletin. Would you join with me in the call to worship? This is the day that our God has made. What do you rejoice in today? There are no answers listed, you'll notice, because this is for you to answer. What do you rejoice in today? Hooray! No COVID in your house. Thanks be to God. What do you rejoice in today? Rainfall. Amen. We need it. What do you rejoice in today? Also, amen. There is no rain during quad day. What do you rejoice in today? That's right. The excitement of a new school year for all ages and all of our learners. What do you rejoice in today? Yes, friends, our choir is back this morning. Let's give them a round of applause. What do you rejoice in today? Family. And this family of faith. We are grateful to be called together as God's people, planted in this place for this time for this community. Thanks be to God. Amen. Izzy uh, is going to lead us in the opening prayer. Let us pray. God of compassion, God of love, God of justice, we gather this morning as your people pray, as your people to pray and praise your name. We come to worship from a week of new beginnings and familiar patterns. We gather together in communion with your spirit that our hearts might be renewed and your resurrection might be real. Move among us as we pray in the name of the one who came to give us life and give it abundantly, Jesus the Christ, as we pray the prayer he taught us saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join us for our first hymn, Rejoice You Pure in Heart, in your hymnal number 55. So friends, it's different than what's listed in your bulletin. It is number 55, number 55. Let's stand and sing.
turn to those around you and share signs of peace. And if you're on Zoom or on Facebook, share signs of peace in the comments or chat. Peace to everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. And now take a look at the camera and say, peace be with you, friends. Peace be with you. Oh, hi, people on Zoom waving peace to us. Have a seat, would you? So um, last week at our annual um, potluck in the park, worship in the park, we did a blessing of the backpacks, but so many people were gone. And so we decided to do it one more week. And after that, we'll still have backpack tags for you. Um, but we wanted to take a moment to, uh, again, recognize everybody who's going to school um, for this school year. So if you got a backpack tag last week, you're going to stay where you are. But if you didn't get a backpack tag, when I call your sort of cohort group, come on up. So are there any, um, are there any preschoolers through fifth graders who weren't here last week? Come on down. Okay, Lovey, you're going to stand right down there. Thank you. And what about any um, sixth through eighth graders? Hello, come on down. Why don't you go stand next to your brother? Do we have any high school kids who weren't here last week? Ninth through twelfth graders? No? Any college students who weren't here last week who would love, would you like a backpack tag? They're super cool. Come on down. Come on down. Uh -huh. Oh, that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah, stay where you are. Uh, any other college students? Okay. Any grad students? Any grad students who were not here last week? Any teachers or um, teachers or uh, uh, people who work in schools? Anybody else? What about our college professors? Any professors or other university staff who were not here last week? Come on down. Now, you're all going to find a buddy. Find a buddy. Pastor Nate's going to come be your buddy. Uh, and here's how this works, right? Oh, you all can spread out. I had you go down there so you could spread, spread out. Um, so... So whenever we say to bless your mind, you can lightly touch each other's um, head. Um, when we say that may your heart be open, you can make, you can make a cute heart towards each other. Um, when we say may your hands be ready to reach out in friendship, you're going to hold hands with each other. Uh, and then... May your feet be swift and strong to carry you on your path to wisdom and knowledge. If you want to reach down and touch each other's feet, you can. Otherwise, you can just sort of do the spirit hands towards each other's feet. All right? You three are linking up. Brothers, you good? <laughs> okay. And would you all read with me, please? May your mind be clear and focused for the work of learning. May your heart be open to give and receive help and kindness. May your hands be ready to reach out in friendship. May your feet be swift and strong to carry you on the path to wisdom and knowledge. And may you walk with Jesus every step of your way. Amen. Blessings on your new year. Let's give all of these folks a round of applause. Here you go. Come on this way. So all of our... Oh, I'm going to go get her one, yeah. Um, all of our kiddos, all of our kiddos 
Um, Julie is here ready to go with you. And you've got a service project today, right, that you're putting together school kits. So this is for anybody who's in um, kindergarten through seniors in high school. Have a great time today putting together school kits. <clears throat> Anybody else? Anybody else? Blessings. everybody. So exciting to be able to be the liturgist from far away. Thank God for technology, right? Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning it might hold for us on this day. Our first sacred reading is from Leviticus chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, and 33 and 34. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, 
and holy. When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the stranger. The stranger who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the stranger as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Our second sacred reading comes from the epistles, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Together, let us say, may the spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Now it's time for the call to prayer. After the sermon, we will offer up our joys and concerns. Your prayer requests will be offered aloud. Whether you are sitting there in the sanctuary or worshiping remotely like me, you are invited to add your joys and concerns to the prayer list. Go to community-ucc.org slash pray, which is a Google form, or scan the QR code found in the bulletin. Or there are prayer cards on the table at the back of the sanctuary that you may fill out and hand to the usher. Please stand in body or spirit for our next hymn, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant, number 539 in your hymnal. Our words before worship today state that for nearly 169 years, Community United Church of Christ has served Champaign-Urbana and shined God's light for all to see. For over 100 years, Community United Church of Christ, or our forebearers, the Congregationalists, have sat on this street corner shining God's light for all to see. But even more than that, if you wander back today after worship and you look at the two, um, the two watercolor histories that Martha Seif painted for us, you will see that over 111 years ago, the Congregationalists started doing ministry with and being in ministry with university students here. 
We have a long history of shining God's light for all to see. And on a day like today, when there are boxes to be hauled to the quad and hot dogs to make and, and young people to welcome, on a day like today, it's important that we remind ourselves why we do this. Why do we do this? That's the question that we're wrestling with this morning. So as we prepare for the word preached, would you join with me your hearts and minds in prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The poet Naomi Shehab Nye um, writes from her experience, and one poem in particular of hers, I think really gets at the heart of what we are talking about today. I want to read it to you. It's called Red Brocade. The Arabs used to say, when a stranger appears at your door, Feed him for three days before asking who he is, where he comes from, where he's headed. That way, he'll have strength enough to answer. Or, by then, you'll be such good friends, you don't care. Let's go back to that. Rice? Pine nuts? Here, take the red brocade pillow my child will serve water to your horse. No, I was not busy when you came. I was not preparing to be busy. That's the armor everyone put on to pretend they had a purpose in the world. I refuse to be claimed. Your plate is waiting. We will snip fresh mint into your tea. Red Brocade by Naomi Shehab Nye. This poem, this poem is one that always makes scripture come alive for me. And I told, I told Naomi Shehab Nye that when I met her a few years ago. You see, she was born in 1952. Her mother was American. Her father was Palestinian. His family had only been in the U.S. less than four years when she was born. They were refugees who fled after the creation of Israel in 1948. And she too then, as a child, lived in the West Bank with her family. And they left in 1967 just before the Six-Day War. She was 15. The words of our ancient stories about showing hospitality to strangers, entertaining angels unaware, it's in the very soil on which she and her father grew up. And her choice of word, stranger, It's very intentional. Her choice of phrase, the Arabs used to say, it's very intentional. Her comparison between what it means to show extravagant hospitality for three days, it's very intentional. As is the competition with our busyness. It's very intentional. All of those things appear in our ancient stories, and they appeared in her life over and over and over again. When the stranger appears at your door, she says, feed him for three days before even asking a question, because maybe you'll be too good of friends at the end, and it won't matter anymore. 
Nye's poem helps us to remember what is important. And as followers of Christ, we must remember this important thing, that hospitality is the most important practice of the world in which Jesus lived. We see it in all of our sacred stories. It's there from beginning to end. Rahab welcomes the spies. Elijah is cared for by the widow of Zarephath. Elisha by the Shunammite woman. Jesus, Jesus, who was itinerant or homeless, depending on who's talking about Jesus. Jesus himself um, was only able to do what he did because he was reliant on the hospitality of strangers. He made a home often, or was welcomed in at home often, where he did not have one. And <clears throat> Jesus accepts hospitality from those he ought not, like Pharisees, like tax collectors, like foreigners, like women, like foreign women. And then he sends his disciples out and tells them to do the same. The very ministry of Jesus hinges on this ancient practice of hospitality. And to fail to show hospitality, my rabbi friends tell me, is the gravest of sins in that ancient world. Moreover, <clears throat> Jesus tells stories about the practice of hospitality, radical hospitality. You know, like the one about the good Samaritan who takes care of the man after he got mugged. Jesus is so sneaky. I love a sneaky Jesus. In his telling of that story, all of the people who are supposed to take care of this man, like the good religious folks and the good rich folks, well, they don't do that. No, no. It's the Samaritan who does. It's the outsider who does. It's the outcast who does. The Samaritan is good, much to our surprise. Jesus' story is subversive. Jesus is often subversive like that. And all of this welcoming of the stranger, it's in the word. But of course, we don't see that whenever we look at the word hospitality in English. We have to look at the Greek. The Greek for hospitality is philo xenos, love, stranger. Philo xenos, the love of strangers. You see, in his telling of the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus takes an otherwise xenophobic scene, right? Stranger, fear of, xenophobic. And he redeems it. And he makes it philoxenous instead. He makes it full of hospitality instead of fear. That's what all, all of our sacred stories hinge on. Hospitality instead of fear. Feed them for three days. Three days, Naomi Shehab Nye says. Because after that, you'll be too good of friends to worry where they came from. So if you're going to love your neighbor... And you have to show them hospitality. And what does that have to do with us, Community United Church of Christ? Well, like I said in the welcome, over 56,000 strangers have recently moved here to our neighborhood. 56,000. It's a little mind-boggling. It's a lot... Thank you, Tom Ward, yes. That's a lot of hot dogs, y'all. That is a lot of hot dogs. It's a lot of hot dogs over three days 
for us to become friends, right? <clears throat> it's important, too, to know that, and this statistic might be wrong. I already had to update my statistics this morning. But over 22% of those students are from outside of the United States, representing 113 different countries. We have nothing but opportunities to be hospitable here, where God has planted us. Today, we'll do that with hot dogs, but also with veggie dogs, because we understand hospitality. And bottles of water. And we'll do it because we love our neighbors. It's my favorite story from all of these years of handing out hot dogs on Quad Day, <clears throat> that every year there are dozens of students who look at us and say, why? Why are you handing me this food? Why are you handing me a bottle of water? Why are you doing it for free? And my favorite response was Linda Morgan, who looked once at a student and said, because we love you, Welcome. We're so glad you're here. It's a very different response than the transactional life that we live, right? The love of God is only transactional in that it results in a lot of grace and care and unconditional love. That is different from quid pro quo. And if today isn't enough, <laughs> then tomorrow we'll feed more people, welcome new people to the neighborhood, both students and many people in our community, people without jobs, people who are underemployed, people who do not have regular or permanent housing, people who are lonely. Radical hospitality. As I said in the welcome, we've sat in this building for over 100 years, and for over 111 years, the Congregationalists, our forebearers, who loved education, decided to be in ministry with students here at this university. Our forebears could have stayed really comfortable in their big, huge, beautiful building on Tremont Street, but they decided to move here. They decided to plant themselves here, or rather, I would offer, God decided to plant them here and to continue to plant us here so that when strangers appear at our door, we could offer them all of the love of God that we possibly can. The Arabs used to say, when a stranger appears at your door, feed him for three days before asking who he is where he comes from, where he's headed, that way he'll have strength enough to answer. Or by then you'll be such good friends you don't care. Let's go back to that. Rice, pine nuts, here. Take the red brocade pillow. My child will serve water to your horse. No, I was not busy when you came. I was not preparing to be busy. That's the armor everyone puts on to pretend they have a purpose in the world. I refuse to be claimed. Your plate is waiting. We'll snip fresh mint into your tea. It reads so differently, doesn't it? When we understand 
this long legacy of hospitality that we have. And it reads differently too, I think, when we pay attention to those details. <clears throat> I wonder if Naomi Shehab Nye put that three days of hospitality in there on purpose so that the risen Christ, who we feed, who we offer water to, would have strength enough to answer when we ask. I wonder if she put those three days of radical hospitality in there so that we would just see the face of Christ in our new friend. Amen. The time has come for our call to offering. God has shown us the meaning of generosity in the beautiful diversity of creation, in the overflowing love of Jesus Christ, in the never ending gift of the Holy Spirit. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and what is ours to give. In order to give, please go to community-ucc.org and click donate, or if you are worshiping there in the sanctuary, offering may be placed in the plates when you depart. Let us ask for God's blessing over what we offer. Giver of every good and perfect gift, we marvel at your love and care for us and for all that you have made. Help us by your Holy Spirit to lift our hearts to you, to taste and see that you are good and to live lives of abundant generosity, full of gratitude and grace through Jesus our Lord, amen. Good morning. This is the time in our service when we share the joys and concerns of our congregation, friends, and community. You may still offer prayer requests now using the Google form or a yellow prayer request card at the back of the sanctuary. Please also take a look at the ongoing prayer requests in the yellow sheet in your bulletin. Join me now in prayer as we hold the community's prayers in our hearts. As I read our prayers aloud, please join me in the prayer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Peg offers prayers for Randy Musser, who is now at CU Rehab Center in Savoy. Prayers of healing and strength for Randy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jennifer offers prayers of thanksgiving that Catherine is recovered from COVID prayers that her medication side effects are temporary and easily managed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Connie asks for prayers for a friend who begins treatment for cancer tomorrow morning and for another friend who's recovering from surgery before beginning chemo. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Pastor Nate offers prayers of gratitude for the returning students and for this congregation's long-standing ministry of welcome and love. May they have an amazing year and be surrounded by love and support. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Patty and Bill offer prayers in memory and gratitude for Kathy and Bill Henderson, longtime campus ministry board members and financial backers. Also prayers for Pastor Nate and all our campus ministry college students for a great year. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to offer prayers of courage for everyone trying new things this week. May they feel your strength and love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amanda offers prayers that God guides all of the students looking for something like CUCC to us today and tomorrow. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Anna offers prayers of thanksgiving for the wonderful nurses and therapists who've made it possible for her mother-in-law to return to assisted living after suffering post-operative cognitive dysfunction when she broke her femur in July. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. From many places we gather, we gather our hearts and minds together in this moment of communion with the Spirit as we offer our joys and our concerns to God. Friends, from the many places, let's be of one heart and mind together now as we pray. Holy, good, and loving God, you who are broad and varied and constant, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for the newness of this day and the newness of a school year. We know, Holy One, that with newness comes excitement, but also questions, also anxieties, also concerns. Holy One, we pray this morning that your spirit would move in and among and through us, that it would embolden us, help us to ask good questions, help us to find our way, help us to have a sense of calm and purpose and peace when things seem uncertain. Holy One, we lift up this morning to you all of the folks that we know who are, who are troubled, people who are sick, people who are dying, places in the world that are struggling with violence and dis-ease. God, we pray this morning for people who are grieving for people who are hurting in all ways. We pray trusting that your listening ear inclines to us, trusting that your healing hands are upon us, trusting that your spirit weaves us together in your tether. Holy One, this morning, this morning, we humbly pray as your children. And we offer all of these prayers, all of these to you. Both those that are spoken from my lips and those that we whisper now to you from the depths of our hearts in this moment of quiet meditation. In praying these words, Holy One, we open up a place inside of ourselves 
so that your resurrection may be born anew in us. Change us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 528. It's You Are the Seed. Let's rise in body or spirit as we sing together.
decommissioning of the community. That moment we commissioned you to go out and be the church in the world. So many people are making their way down this morning for announcements. Um, I do know that there's going to be an announcement about the Our Whole Lives program for young people, but I want to let you know uh, about a worship series that's coming up. Um, so next week, Pastor Nate is going to be preaching, sort of the, the counterpoint to the sermon that I gave this morning. But then starting on September 4th and going through the first Sunday in October, uh, we're going to do a worship series called Word Made Flesh, Liberating Narratives of Shame. And that worship series is based on the values of the Our Whole Lives Sexuality Education Program and the Five Circles of Sexuality. It's gonna be a really, really good worship service, including, I'm hoping, uh, every week, a word from a therapist, our good friend, the Reverend Jennifer All, uh, out in New York City, is gonna offer a word um, each week based on those five circles. It's gonna be really good fun, um, so invite folks um, to come and worship with you, would you? Hi, long line of folks, Pastor Connie. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Pastor Connie, and I have two opportunities for you from the John Bandy Center for Spirituality and Faith. The first is this Wednesday, our photography as prayer group will be meeting at the Idea Garden at 9 o'clock. And we are using the free app that you can get for your phone called Photography as Prayer. Our practice that we're going to be talking about that day will be the third one on the website called Getting Closer. Now. If you're sitting there thinking, I'm not a great photographer, I shouldn't be part of this, that's not the case. We're not going out trying to capture the most beautiful photographs ever. We're using our cameras to help us be more mindful of the way we move through the day. And mindfulness is also at the heart of the second opportunity. In your bulletin this morning, you should have found a registration form for a retreat that Pastor Leah and I will be leading on September 10th from 9 to 1.30. It's called Hallowing Our Days. And if you are like so many of us in these post-pandemic days, you know, even though the pandemic is still going on, we're post-pandemic, right? Uh, time feels a little weird, and it's hard to kind of figure out what we're supposed to be doing and when and where, and, and how does God fit into that? And so we're going to spend some time that morning with not just Leah and me talking to you, I promise, because you don't want to listen to four and a half hours of that. <laughs> but there will be lots of hands-on things to do and time to interact with one another and tools for you to take home, to use at home. So the form is in your bulletin this morning. There's a fee of $15 to help cover the cost of the supplies for what we're planning. If that's a problem for you, don't let it stop you. Just let Pastor Leah know we have funds available that we can draw from for that. And the registration deadline is the Sunday before the retreat. We hope we'll see a lot of you there. Thanks so much. Ilsa. Hello, I'm Ilsa Cantola. I am your congregational campus ministry liaison. So I'm here on behalf of Pastor Nate and the campus ministry board while Nate has run off to Quad Day. As campus ministry events kick off this year, you are going to see some familiar faces and some new ones. Um, this year, among the smattering of uh, Lutherans and Methodists who make occasional appearances, you may also find some bonus Presbyterian students at our campus ministry events. The UCC campus ministry is exploring cooperative ministry with the McKinley Student Foundation this year. They are without a campus minister currently. We are experimenting with shared calendars and activities to have a bigger reach and to get outside our silos. Uh, we're sort of building this bridge as we walk across it, so the details are a little fuzzy. <laughs> but we are moving forward with the students' best interest in mind, and we're going to share the details with you as we know them. There are sign-up sheets in the back on that little table with the yellow basket. For any family units that are uh, interested in being paired with a student in our campus home program, this matches a family unit with a student for one-on-one -on -one type of um, fellowship and um, just sharing a meal occasionally, a chance to talk, maybe it's just a texting relationship. 
If you're interested in that, you can sign up back there, and we will also be signing up students on a sheet back there so we can make some matches. Um, we also are going to restart our Sunday lunch program, which is where members of the congregation host students in their home, your yard, your garage, the nearby park, uh, for a meal and fellowship on Sunday uh, after worship. We keep it to 90 minutes, they clean up after themselves, it's a lot of fun, you get to know the students. So if you would like to participate in that, that sign-up sheet is also in the back. Thanks, Ilsa. I really want to encourage you, CUCCers, to participate in the Campus Home Program. Our campus ministry students need some good chaunties and chunkles, church aunties and church uncles. Um, so please go ahead and, and sign up, um, sign up to, to be a Campus Home um, House. Thanks so much. Kathy. Hi guys, I'm Kathy Lee. I'm the music director here, and I just wanted to be sure you all know that you are all welcome to participate in music here at church. And if you're someone who's interested in choir, uh, we will resume Wednesday rehearsals pretty soon. We're starting trying to figure out if people are actually available. So instead of showing up on Wednesday at seven, be sure you get on our email list, and that's how you know when we're meeting on a given Wednesday or a Sunday. We'd love to have you. If you have another musical gift you want to share, just get in touch. That would be awesome. I also want to invite all the 6th through 12th graders today to our house. We're having a hangout at 5 p.m. We're going to sort of talk about the year to come for uh, youth ministry and what we're going to be doing. And you guys get to sort of plan what's going to be happening this year. I will have drinks, fruit, pizza, s'mores things. If those things don't cover your needs, feel free to bring your own food. We'll hang out outside as long as the weather holds up. See you soon. Thanks so much. Yeah, I have some games planned, and we have some planning to do, and it's going to be fun. I promise you'll have a good time. So we'll see you tonight. Matt. Hello. I'm Matthew Hart. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm um, the head of grounds here at the church. Uh, on the back of your yellow sheet, you will see that we still have some mowing opportunities. I wanted to assure anybody that's interested in signing up for it. Um, that we no longer have that beast of a mower out there that would shake your arms off when you tried to use it. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a different mower out there that will be nice and gentle on you if, if you're interested in doing that. So please, uh, you'll see a lot of open slots still. Uh, we'll be mowing through the end of October, I think, uh, probably like that. So that's one thing. Also, um, I made this announcement uh, back in the springtime. Um, on the north side of the church, the Lord has blessed us with an area where she won't allow anything to grow. Uh, <laughs> so we have created a rock garden out there. If you look in the rock garden, you will see one lone stone that um, I found. Uh, it, it's actually a piece of a wall from Pitsligo Parish Church in the Aberdeenshire in Scotland. Um, anyway, it's sitting out there. Uh, like that, and I've written on there where we found it and things like that. So I encourage anybody who wants to contribute a rock to the rock garden, please do. Um, it's going to be there for years now, so keep adding to it, you know, like that. And the, it's, you know, about fist size, if you can, nothing bigger than that, like that. Uh, last thing I have is that I know it's still summertime, but I'm going to start looking into a possible fall cleanup day, and I'll have some announcements coming up about that. So anyway, thank you. Thanks so much, Matt. Amanda. Hey, I'm a returning member of the campus ministry, and um, Nate is gone right now. So he asked me to meet with some the new students that are here, um, and I have some flyers to give you and a really cool sticker. So um, if, if you come see me, we have a, a bunch of really cool events coming up this semester, one of them being tomorrow. We're going to play some bingo after Jubilee Cafe. We got the coolest prizes, so make sure you come to that. Um, we're asking students to come uh, at 6 p.m. to Jubilee Cafe to eat with us, and then we're going to play some bingo. So yeah, see me after service if you are interested in learning more. Thanks, Amanda. Janelle. Hey, good morning. I'm Janelle, and I um, wanted to talk a little bit about the Our Whole Lives, uh, the OWL events that are coming up. 
So if you look in the yellow sheet uh, that you either have with you or was attached to the, online, the email, uh, you can see that on September 22nd, there will be a parent orientation night. Um, that will include a light supper. And Allison um, has kindly put her contact information there. So please email her if you um, are gonna be attending that. Also email her if for chance that you have a conflict that night, like you're working, so we know how to schedule a makeup session. But also I wanted to keep you in mind that today is the day to let Pastor Leah or Allison know that you want your um, middle school student, sixth through ninth grade, um, to participate in OWL for the coming year. Um, and then we're going to kick it off with our students at our first retreat of the year is scheduled for the weekend of October 8th through 9th. We'll start about 5 p.m. on Saturday the 8th and go through about 5 p.m. on Sunday the 9th, 8th and 9th. Yeah, I think I have the exact A little dates. earlier than that, 4, little, but yeah. Like 4 p.m. to end. Yes. Okay, so 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, obviously, we'll have meals and things uh, in there with that as well. Uh, location to be determined. Are there Thanks. other owl things? Yeah, I just have two owl things. One, if you have a 10th through 12th grader who you would like to have take the OWL program, we will have that curriculum in the new year. So if you are interested in having your 10th through 12th grader participate in OWL, also let us know that, um, because it, it's gonna help us with scheduling. Also, um, if you're a parent um, and you're interested in what the curriculum looks like, I have it over here today, and please come and look at it, and you can talk with any of the teachers Larry Lee, Janelle, Laura, Allison, David Wilcox is not here, um, Jean and Bryn. Um, that's it. One last thing, so quad days here, the students are here. It's one of the happiest times of year as a professor. I like to see everybody come back, but also means that Jubilee Cafe, we're going to be busier and busier on Monday nights. Um, the, the Sign Up Genius link, the easiest way to find it is go to our Facebook page, Jubilee Cafe CUCC, it's pinned at the top. Uh, we're gonna need volunteers every week. We've added a few extra slots to help with cleanup to make sure that we all kind of get through there really quickly and also take some of the, the extra time off of our cooks who go a little bit earlier in the day. So please, um, if you have some time on a Monday, uh, starting about three or 3.30, uh, go to the sign up and come help us out. We have a really good time. So uh, come, come volunteer at Jubilee Cafe. Thanks, Janelle. Julie. Sorry, I'm short. Okay. Hello. <laughs> um, uh, school is back in session, and that means pretty soon Sunday school is going to be back in session. Um, rally day is going to be uh, September 11th. And we'll have a blessing for our kids and we'll be sent off to Sunday school and we'll start having our regular Sunday school lessons again on Sunday mornings. Um, so in the parlor today, I have a sign up if you would like to be added to my list of helpers for Sunday school. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to lead and teach a lesson. It could mean that you just come down and hang out and interact with the kids and be just another adult that they um, have that's helping them along their way. Um, I already had um, actually a few campus ministry folks sign up last week, which I'm very excited about. Um, so the more hands we have, the more that each of those people aren't taking their time out of church, because we all need to be in church too, getting those things. Um, there's also a um, piece of paper out there with a QR code. Um, if you have kids that you want to get signed up for Sunday school, pre-K through fifth, and even if you have littler, um, ones or know of people that have littler ones. We need to gauge if childcare is something that we need to take care of. We haven't been doing that for the past couple of years. Um, so there's um, a code to the form out there. There's also a space where you can just jot down an email um, if you want me to reach out and get you the information. And that's it. Thanks, Julie. Church is so much more than what happens on Sunday morning, right? It's all of these things. Thank you to everyone uh, who makes our community of faith so vibrant. Would you rise, please, and body your spirit uh, for the benediction. Friends, go from this place knowing that God loves you so very much, that Jesus came to give us life and to give it abundantly, and that the Holy Spirit surrounds you this day and all days. 
Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank you.